Thank you very much indeed. I'm delighted to be here. Um, my name is Libby Morris, and uh, I'm first and foremost. Oh, I thought I had my title. Never mind. My, um, I'm first and foremost a GP, and I've been representing GPs on the Professional Records Standards Board ever since its inception. Now, I also work for the Scottish Government doing health informatics. And um, health informatics is beleaguered by acronyms, so unfortunately we've got a really bad acronym in PRSB because nobody knows what it stands for. <laughs> but if you forget about the P and just think about record standards, that is really the nub of it. And what I'd like to do um, just now is very quickly describe the work of the PRSB, tell you a little bit about it and how it comes to be working with the Respect uh, Digital Transformation Group. And, um, Hopefully, if any of you are interested, we can carry on the conversation this afternoon at one of the workshops. So, um, the vision of the PRSB is basically to improve standards for recording information, both paper records and uh, electronic records, to improve care for patients. Uh, now, the Professional Records Standards Board represents over 70 different uh, professional bodies and organisations now, including many of the patient groups. Um, because of this huge spread of uh, members, it uh, is able to carry out widespread consultations on standards, it's able to assure uh, standards for, for publication and for use in electronic records, and uh, it's able to call on a huge amount of expertise from all of these different groups. A few of them are listed, listed here, but as I say, there's over 70, 70 organisations now, including several international ones as well. Now, why do standards matter? Lots and lots of reasons why standards matter, but perhaps um, the best illustration was from Lindsay this morning. Now, Lindsay works in Scotland, as I do. She works in Forth Valley. I work in Lothian, which is only 30 miles away. But there's absolutely no way we can share records, apart from the odd little bit of um, uh, specialised things. For example, diabetic patients have got shared records. So Lindsay showed a picture of her screen, which is completely unlike my screen. I'm sure that she'll record her blood pressures in a different way, she will record her medications in a different way, um, there will be clinical coding which is different. I might be able to get a password to look at her system, she might get a password to look at mine. That is not integrated records, that's not patient-centred, that's not good for healthcare. And we've not even started um, to address Cathy's concern. Got absolutely no records whatsoever. So, standards are the key to interoperability, to sharing records, allowing patients to participate in, in their record recording as well. So, current record standards, which have already been developed by the PRSB, um, there's ambulance handover documents, there's discharge letters which have been agreed, um, child health care records have also been agreed and they're now being implemented in in England for the new child health digital record and so on and so on. So um, I can't remember if Respect came to PRSB or PRSB went to Respect but anyway we all got together and we thought <laughs> it would be a really good idea if we use the um, PRSB standards process to look at how we can transform the paper form for the Respect form into a digital process to start to look at some of the problems of having the paper form possibly in the wrong place, of having only one paper form, of not being able to update it, etc, etc. You all know all of the reasons why we need to think about a, a, a digital process. Um, typically, the PRSB looks at record standards using, the, if you think about the old paper form, the paper um, records, looking at headings, defining the headings, getting definitions, deciding on coding, putting it through their, their processes and then agreeing and publishing. So the standards process is quite complex. Uh, if you look at uh, um, starting off with identifying the priority area and going through a huge process of workshops, getting experts, finding out what everyone else is doing, putting it all together, doing email surveys, etc, 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 a huge, a huge wheel of activity. But what we felt we could do with um, the respect form is because an awful lot of this has already been done. So you can't really see my pointer. Um, all of this, the literature review, the workshops, the uh, et cetera, et cetera, has been done probably up to about here, I would say, with the respect form. So we're not talking about changing the respect form in any way at all. We're talking about making the process digital. 
Now, we all know exactly what respect does and that it's a process, because that's why we're all here. But I put this into the presentation in case any of you want to take the presentation away and use it in your own organisation. So I've just put a couple of respect ones in just for, um, for reference. But you can see here that um, part of the respect uh, vision is to have it interoperable across health and social care. And of course, that includes with patients as well. Um, at the minute, the form can be printed, the form can be made electronic simply by scanning it and copying it. That doesn't mean to say it's digital, it doesn't interact in any way, but um, it's just acting as an electronic copy. So, so far, what uh, our joint group has done is to create a writable PDF, which is just, an it just sorry, a picture of a form. Um, but what we are doing now with uh, PRSB is to um, it's a sort of the, the techie bit. Now this is where I always start to fumble. <laughs> Julie always says she's not a techie. I'm not a techie either. But we've all got to start and think about it. It's all really important. If we're going to solve any of these problems, we have to learn the language a little bit and we have to stri start trying to sort out the problems. So, this is the respect form. Um, and several people have mentioned the difficulties about having a black and white paper form with tick boxes visual analogue scales, etc, etc. Yes, and those are quite easily done in electronic records, but visual analogue scales I don't think have been attempted so far. Now, for any of you who, like me, read their phone on their digital device, the digital um, version of it is always much better than the paper version. If you've got a printed paper, newspaper, you read it from cover to cover. If you've got a digital one, you can read it yesterday's. You can um, get it updated throughout the day. Different contrib contributors um, update it at different times. You can part some of it, you can forward some of it. You, you can do a lot more than you can with just the paper form. So that's what we need to think about with the digital form. We can do an awful lot more than we can with just the piece of paper, which might or might not be in the right place at the right time. The digital form gives us all sorts of opportunities for sharing it, for updating it, for having all sorts of um, different contributions and basically making it much better than just a, a paper form. So, um, if you break the paper form down into its constituent pieces, uh, another colleague of mine always talks about and if you think of each of the items of information as a Lego brick, which goes to make up the whole record, it's easier to visualise that many of these different uh, data items in the respect form will already be on the medical record in lots of other places. Carers, details, um, consents, uh, diagnoses, all sorts of other bits and pieces will already be uh, present in the record. So um, some of it's already been done. The thing about our digitalisation uh, group is to put it all together and to fill in the missing gaps. Um, this is just that same diagram in, written in English. And I think um, the last sort of thing I would like to say is that although digitalisation gives us lots and lots of opportunities to improve things, we do have to be really, really careful. And at the last discussion, there was a very sort of important bit right at the very end where somebody says, if you've got a form, does that mean it's DNA CPR? And so if you've got a digital version of it, how are you going to ensure that it's always in the right place at the right time? And I know that we're going to carry on this discussion in much more detail this afternoon with Peter Mark. So I would urge all of you, don't think it's just the techie bit. It's really, really important. And if you've got good ideas, please come along and uh, we we'll look forward to taking it forward. Okay, thanks, thanks very much.